Hi everyone, um, Emily here again today and um, I've also got Pepper with me and uh, how is everybody doing? How are we all holding out? Um, I hope everybody's doing well um, and yeah, let's just get on into it. Um, I wanted to talk today a little bit about something else that I experienced as somebody with DID um, and that is having multiple alters um, being close to the front, um, close to being present at the same time. So a lot of the time I describe how my head feels as sort of like a house. Um, so if people are, are downstairs or in the front room, um, to me that means they're awake, they're active and I can almost sort of feel what their thoughts and opinions are on things that are happening. Um, so if quite a few people are downstairs and close to the front um, it can get quite confusing um, I think in the past I've called it soupy um, but to me there's a difference so soupy is when a lot of alters are around but I can't exactly tell who they are and I also don't know exactly who I am or whoever is fronting um, so soupy is more confusing and a bit more sort of calm in a way whereas when there are a lot of people downstairs and we're sort of trying to choose who's going to front um, because we know who it is, we can, we can identify everybody and it's very clear, it's not confusing like it is when we're soupy. Um, that can still be quite slightly distressing, um, very confusing and frustrating. Um, because a lot of my alters, I'm really lucky, are very kind and will say, no, no, you go first. And when you're trying to let a switch happen, because um, I can feel there are a lot of people there and I've been out for a while and I'm willing to make space, I'm willing to have somebody else front. Um, so I'm making space for everybody, but nobody is fronting because they're all like, no, no, I think you should take the time. That can be a frustrating thing that happens. Um, usually somebody will then just go, okay, I want it more and they'll just front. Um, so this isn't something that lasts for a very long time, um, at the most like about an hour or so, um, but it is something that happens and during that time um, it's when we like to be called Myriad because um, we chose Myriad to be um, sort of like a group name, like a team name. So. Myriad to us means that the person who says it is addressing all of us um, and it's something that we really like and appreciate so some of my friends um, if they don't know exactly who's out or even if they just want to let the whole system know that they're thought about will just call me Miri um, because Again, they're addressing everybody. Um, if we're playing a game or they're being more specific and talking to me, Emily, um, they'll say my name. Um, but if they're just saying, how are you guys? They'll say, Miri, how are you? And um, it's something that we've really grown to kind of appreciate and uh, enjoy the experience of um, because it lets them, all of my alters know that they're thought about and considered as real people um, and that's definitely something we really appreciate um, so that's been a big change since having our diagnosis is that they're all addressed and referred to so that's a really big positive um, so yeah if we are if there's a lot of um, us around um, people will then start calling me Miri or Myriad um, because we don't know exactly who's going to front um, it's not usually um, too worrying or anything. We just sort of wait until someone decides um, that they want to front. Um, but yeah, it's certainly very interesting because I will say if it's me that's still out, I'll hear lots of people's thoughts and opinions on what's going on. Um, and I can also then hear them sort of making space for each other. Um, 
So yeah, it's it's definitely something that I know I, I experience as somebody with DID. Um, and it's not just me, so I might have Pepper fronting and um, she might find it difficult to tell who's going to come out next because there's a lot of people downstairs. Um, it can be um, sort of, it can make me feel a bit tense. Um, it can make me like feel like I'm a bit sort of claustrophobic in a way. Um, so this is if it's a not particularly fun experience and it's been going on for about an hour or so. Um, I can feel sort of tight chested um, but usually like I say somebody will say okay enough's enough I'm going to front. Sort of similar to what happens when I'm soupy. Um, I hope that kind of helps you guys understand a little bit between the difference um, between how it feels when I'm soupy versus when there's multiple people around. So soupy is really upsetting and distressing, um, almost more calm in a way though because I don't know who I am. Um, yeah, it can be calming or it can be just not happy at all. Um, I show you a little bit of what it looks like when I'm soupy um, in a previous video, so I'll link that in the description. In the video um, DID questions and switch talk, um, not only do I switch on camera, I also show a previous clip of when I've been really soupy. Um, so please check that one out. But yes, so there's a difference between being soupy and having a lot of people active. Um, so we're trying to figure out how best to help ourselves when we're in these situations. Um, and also maybe like try and offer some advice to you guys. Um, so the thing that I think would be really good when we're really soupy and it's very distressing and we don't know who we are is um, trying out how different things feel. So uh, sort of asking ourselves what our gender is and do we feel masculine or feminine or um, non-binary. Um, maybe that will help me identify who I am. Sort of ask um, ourselves questions that would narrow down who we are. Um, because even if we're sort of a, a soupy mess of everybody, it will um, sort of trigger one person to feel more comfortable um, and maybe into fronting. Um, it's just a thought that I've had um, and I've been trying to work on it, but it can be quite difficult when I'm alone. Um, so I think I would like to try these sort of tactics when somebody's with me so that they can sort of ask me or, or try different names, um, say sort of like, oh, Peter, what do you think about that? And then we can um, very quickly say, oh, no, we're definitely not Peter if that's how we feel. So I think that could be um, a good way to help somebody if they're feeling soupy, they're not quite sure who they are, they're very dissociated, um, dissociated and um, hopefully that would help. Um, just sort of ask them, you know, would you like to watch this if you know it's something that maybe a couple of them um, alters like. Um, things like that because we're all different people, so we all have different tastes slightly in things, so try and help, even if you can't figure out who it is, encourage somebody to the front with positive triggers. Um, I don't often think that using positive triggers is a good idea, because trying to control when somebody switches and who comes out is never a nice thing to do. Um, but I think if somebody is very distressed, they don't know who they are, one, let them know that it doesn't matter. So let them know whoever you are, even if you're nobody, whatever happens, um, I'm here for you and you're okay, you're not in any trouble, I'm not going to expect you to be anybody. Um, that helps, I think, um, knowing that you have that safe space to take your time to know exactly who you are, um, but also do encourage um, somebody to front in, in more gentle, positive ways, um, rather than just saying, okay, snap out of it, Emily, you need to be here. Um, 
you can you can do things or, or encourage things like hey let's maybe go for a dog walk or um, you know let's watch one of your favorite TV shows something like that to encourage somebody um, forwards I think that's that's something you could try and do to help um, if you know somebody with DID who gets soupy too. Um, also I'd be really interested to know if any of you guys do have DID um, and what you call your version of soupy. Um, I, I'm not you know, a professional or an expert in, in any way, um, I'm just sharing what our experience as a system is and we call it soupy. Um, also, I'd be interested to know what anybody else does if you know there's multiple people who are awake and want to front. Um, we sort of go by who has had the most time recently, um, who's been out the most, um, that sort of thing. Try and keep it as fair as possible. Um, most of my alters don't just sort of push um, and shove their way out. So, um, yeah, those are some things about being soupy and um, having multiple alters awake. Um, I just think it's quite interesting, another aspect of DID um, that people might not necessarily automatically think of. Um, so I hope that's been a little bit interesting. Um, I hope it makes sense to you guys and I really hope you have an awesome day. Um, also it would be really cool if you would subscribe and comment. Um, haven't had many comments yet um, but I would really love to get them so I can hear what you guys think about this kind of content and answer any questions you guys have. Um, so that would be really cool if you could leave a comment. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I have to share with you today guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.